you can start. Hi, I'm Miss R, and today we're going to do lessons five and six from unit one. We're going to investigate the effect of temperature on viscosity. I'll say that again so you can write it down. We're going to investigate how temperature affects viscosity. Since we're investigating how temperature affects viscosity, let's talk about molasses for a second. A lot of times, old folks will say, that's slower than molasses in January. And they are talking about how temperature affects viscosity. It's January and I have molasses. This has been in the freezer. Let's see how viscous or how gooey this molasses is. It's gonna take quite some time to ooze out of the bottle. And there it is. You can see that the viscosity of molasses is very different than the viscosity of water. You can think about what would happen if we warmed this molasses up. Would it flow more quickly or would it flow more slowly? Think about what you know about viscosity of liquids and temperature. If you work on cars, you can think about motor oil and the different types of motor oil for different seasons. This is honey and I like putting honey on my toast. I know that if I put honey on warm toast it gets runny. So that's something to think about too when you're thinking about the effect of temperature on viscosity. When we give more kinetic energy to the molecules in a liquid, they move more quickly. Kinetic energy is energy of moving. So you can think about temperature, which is a measurement of average kinetic energy of the molecules in a substance. If we increase that kinetic energy, what's going to happen to how quickly this liquid moves? First two questions on the lab sheet, let's talk about making a hypothesis. Hypothesis, for instance, for this lab, if we change the temperature, then what's going to happen to the viscosity because explain how temperature affects viscosity in terms of kinetic energy. So if we change the temperature, then you predict what will happen to viscosity and tell me why you think it's going to happen. If, then, because. Making a good hypothesis. To prepare for this lab, you need some sticky liquid. You need either honey, molasses, or corn syrup. I'm going to use corn syrup for this experiment because it's inexpensive and I can dye it blue so you can see it better. The first thing I'm going to do is fill a tablespoon, that's a big spoon, with corn syrup and put it in a snack size plastic bag. If you have honey packets, you can use those. Those work great, but for those of us who didn't get honey packets, you can make your own packets of sticky liquid by just putting honey, molasses, or kale syrup in a snack size bag like this. Then you need to put seven of these in the freezer. So make seven of these little bags and put them in the freezer. In order to figure out how quickly a liquid flows, we're going to use a cookie sheet with a ruler taped to it and we're going to pour a little bit of sticky liquid right here, time for 30 seconds, and then see how far the liquid has dripped. In order to time the 30 seconds that we're going to let the liquid flow, we're going to use our stopwatch. In order to reset the stopwatch, you put your finger and thumb on the two yellow buttons. To start the stopwatch, use your thumb right here. You want to put a frozen packet into a container of water at 70 degrees Celsius. Um, when you reach in, don't reach in with your fingers. Use a spoon or a tongs. To... Okay, now it's time to test the viscosity of our warm corn syrup. I'm going to take it out of the hot water. Notice how it's all kind of down in the corner here. I'm going to clip off the corner with a pair of scissors here, and then I'm going to squeeze it onto a the top of a cookie sheet here and we're going to time for 30 seconds using a stopwatch 
Now I'm going to squeeze just a little bit of corn syrup right here at the top of the ruler and time for 30 seconds. And we'll see how far it goes in 30 seconds. Okay, now that it's 30 seconds have gone by that I timed on my stopwatch, I can see how far the corn syrup has dripped in 30 seconds. That's at 70 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to experiment with the viscosity at 40 degrees Celsius. You can see the water has cooled down to 40 degrees Celsius and I'm going to take out the packet and I'm going to run it on the cookie sheet again. Okay, I'm going to snip off the corner of the plastic bag, come over to the cookie sheet, and just give a little bit of corn syrup at the beginning and then start my stopwatch. You might notice it's running a little bit slower this time. Okay, 30 seconds have gone by and you can see it hasn't gone down as much this time. The drip hasn't gone as far. If we look over here on the ruler at the centimeter mark, you can see that it hasn't gone quite as far this time. You want to put that information in the data table under question 4. The temperature would be 40 degrees C and the distance covered you can get by looking at the ruler. My water was at 40, now I want it to be 20. I can wait for it to cool or I can add some ice cubes and the frozen packet of corn syrup. Make sure you're using a new packet each time and they come straight from the freezer and I can wait till the ice does its work and it gets down to 20. It'll go a lot faster if you do it this way. And again, I'm just gonna squeeze a little corn syrup at the starting line, start my stopwatch over here, and we're gonna time for 30 seconds. At 30 seconds on the stopwatch, you can see where it is. This is 20 degrees Celsius, and the corn syrup made it about this far. Now you can see that I've added a bunch of ice cubes and brought the temperature of the water down to zero degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to take the bag out, cut the corner off, and run it down the cookie sheet. Okay, here's corn syrup at zero degrees Celsius. You can see how far the corn syrup went after 30 seconds at zero degrees Celsius. You want to put this in your data table under question four. As we went through the experiment, I wrote down the temperature we were working at and the distance the liquid ran down, measured on the ruler, in this column. Let's remember for a moment that graphs have an independent variable on the horizontal axis and a dependent variable on the vertical axis. Independent is what we decide before the experiment is performed. We decided that we were going to use different temperatures. The dependent variable depends on what happens in the experiment. It's the results of the experiment. Using the table from question four, I plotted points. For example, zero Celsius, the liquid ran 3.3 centimeters. So I go to zero on the temperature scale and go up 3.38. Question seven in the lab says, use your graph and trend line to predict how far the honey, or in our case, corn syrup, would flow at 80 degrees centigrade. With my ruler, I'm gonna try to decide about the average of the, where the points are going as they go from zero degrees to 70 degrees. I don't just connect the dots, I put my ruler equal distances from each point. And it looks to me like the trend line is somewhere in here. Mathematically, if you have a program do it, like Excel, it will calculate the least distance from each point to the line. Make a good prediction based on what if we got data from 80 degrees centigrade, which would be kind of dangerous in our case, but we can make a good prediction. We simply go up from 80 degrees and we look where our trend line is. And then we work over here and we can see it's somewhere. We want to make a conclusion. A conclusion should include whether your data agrees with your hypothesis. You don't want to say your hypothesis was, was correct. You just want to say whether your data agrees with it or not.